Russians want to gather 60,000 soldiers in the Kursk region. Ukrainian military analyst Alexei Getman said this in an interview with Ukrainian radio. But he said that there are no signs that the Russian military is preparing to launch a counterattack in Russia's Kursk region. According to him, the armed forces of Ukraine control a part of the railway in the region, given that the Russians use the railway mainly for the transportation of manpower and equipment, they will try to push the Ukrainian forces north of Sudza. But I am not sure that they will succeed. He recalled that the armed forces of Ukraine blew up the bridges over the same river and it is extremely difficult for the Russians to send in troops. Ukraine launched its cross-border incursion into Russia's Kursk Oblast in early August, claiming to have seized around 100 settlements and over 1,300 square kilometers. Recently, Ukrainian forces have halted a Russian counteroffensive in Kursk Oblast, part of which is currently under Ukrainian control, Colonel Alexei Dmitryshkivsky, spokesperson for the military command serving in Kursk Oblast, told agents France Presa. Ukraine secured a portion of Russian territory near Sumy Oblast, pushing Russian artillery out of range and stopping cross-border shelling on nearby communities. According to Dmitryshkivsky, the Russians attempted to attack from the flanks, but the Ukrainian armed forces halted them. The situation is now stable and under control. However, Dmitryshkivsky noted that the Russian army did achieve some success in this counteroffensive. Dmitryshkivsky mentioned that there are several thousand Russian civilians in the areas controlled by Ukrainian forces. He said they are not allowed to leave because the situation must be controlled but are allowed to move around the area. They can visit each other, eat there, unite somewhere, dig potatoes now, work in the garden, he explained. According to him, the only way to allow civilians to leave for Russian-controlled territory would be if Ukraine and Russia agreed through international organizations dealing with these issues to open a green corridor under the supervision of observers. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky is set to present his victory plan in Washington. The US has already said it has seen some of the general outlines of the plan and believes it is practical. However, as The Times columnist Mark Galliotti writes, Kyiv and the West may have different views on victory and it is unclear whether Ukraine's allies believe the enemy can really be driven out. As the Observer writes, the West believes that one of the goals of Zelensky's plan is to retain the support of allies. As the German diplomat noted in a conversation with Galliotti, I don't know whether it will bring victory over the Russians, but it is probably intended, like everything else, to force us to stay in line. At the same time, Galliotti writes, there is considerable Ukraine fatigue in the West and a growing sense that the time has come to end the conflict, even if that means establishing an ugly peace. At the same time, the Observer notes, Western allies do not have a unified opinion on how the war should end. Instead of resolving these contradictions, the West hides behind the empty mantra that Ukraine itself must make the decision. Unwilling to directly resolve its differences over how this conflict could end, the West has failed to reach agreement on several key dilemmas, he notes. At the same time, the article says even the most outspoken allies of Ukraine are skeptical that Kyiv will be able to recapture all of the occupied territory by military means. Even an avowed Ukraine hawk from a Polish think tank admitted to me, Ukraine's borders have often shifted over time. The real struggle now is to make sure that Ukraine's borders shift as little as possible in the future. He writes, the unfortunate consequence, Galliotti writes, is that if Ukraine continues to refuse to acknowledge any territorial losses, the conflict will turn into an eternal war. After a certain point, exhaustion will set in and the military conflict will fluctuate between episodes of brutal fighting and temporary ceasefires. But it will not end, he notes. As reported, Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky plans to present a plan for Ukraine's victory at a meeting with US President Joe Biden. It includes four main points and one more that will be needed after the war. US Ambassador to the UN Linda Thomas-Greenfield said the United States had already reviewed President Volodymyr Zelensky's plan to end the war and believed it could work. 
Zelensky later said that the victory plan schedule is designed for quick decisions to be approved by Ukraine's allies in October to December. Then we think the plan will work, he said.